Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. In this episode, we're going to start a series called Tesla 2030, where we start to project and consider what Tesla might actually look like in 2030. If you've been subbed to the channel for some time, you know that I like to keep up with the news and that's very exciting. But personally, I've always been a long-term thinker and I think as Tesla investors, those of you who are, it's important that we step back, zoom out, and do this type of thought experiment every now and then. Now, this episode in particular that will kick off our Tesla 2030 series that will take place over the next few weeks, we'll talk mostly about revenue figures over the next decade for Tesla. We will touch on some delivery numbers and the stock price potential. And if at any point you do get some level of value or entertainment from this episode, please take one second to like this video. It means a lot to me as a creator. And as YouTubers, we are doing well if we can get 10% of views to like the episodes. So if I get 20,000 views on a video and I can get 2,000 likes, that's considered a success, which to the other 90% of you, I always wonder what are you guys doing? Any video I watch, as long as it's not miserable or giving out poor information, I'm gonna like that episode because I understand the work that goes into it. But with that mini rant out of the way, let's jump into the spreadsheet and break down some numbers. Welcome to the spreadsheet. So this is where we will start this episode. Very straightforward. We have the years, the quarters, and the revenue figures in billions. The yellow cells are projections. They're also italicized. We'll go over some notes. And the blue column is just the actual year over year percent change figures for Tesla's revenue. So as you can see, 2016, their revenue grew 73% year over year, 2017, 67, 2018, 82, and 2019, it only grew 14.52%. I had expressed some concerns in a previous episode about Tesla's US sales growth slowing and I was met with a lot of criticism, which I didn't really hear a ton of great answers, but we'll leave that for another time. So in 2020, of course, we will get Tesla's official figures sometime in the next two to three weeks. But what I did was I broke down quarter three like this. So they delivered 48,409 more cars in Q3 of this year than Q2. I've calculated an average sale price of $52,271 and then multiply that by that number of cars sold to get an additional $2.53 billion in incremental revenue over the quarter two figures. Now, if you're wondering where I got that average sale price, here's what I did. I took the auto revenue from quarter two, which was $5.179 billion, and then subtracted the $428 million that was from regulatory credits to get $4.751 billion from auto sales without the regulatory credits. I then divided that figure by the 90,891 deliveries that Tesla had in Q2 to get my average sale price of roughly $52,271. So I did tweet out, and by the way, I may be somewhat active on Twitter. Once again, don't hold me to that, but the link is in the description below if you're interested. So I do think we'll obviously see a record revenue quarter for Tesla in Q3, roughly around $8.5 billion. And then for Tesla to grow revenue by 30% year over year for 2020, which Elon has given us some indication he was expecting to do, that would require a $31 billion revenue for the year. So I just subtracted quarter one and quarter two actuals with my quarter three projection to get an $11.3 billion required for quarter four to hit that 31 billion for the year. Now, going down, I will explain where these numbers come from momentarily, but I found an article back from 2015 where Elon made a quote and he said that he was expecting Tesla's market cap to be $700 billion by 2025, and he was assuming a 50% annual revenue growth rate at the time. And of course, we've heard him multiple times since then talk about delivery growth being between 40 and 50% year over year. 
So that kind of gives us a baseline of what we can expect, or at least what Elon is expecting. But of course, 2020 was full of challenges that were unexpected with CV19. So I think 30% revenue growth would be very strong. I did boost it up to 50% through 2025, but it's not arbitrary. And I'll explain why I think there are catalysts where that could be reasonable. So for 2021, we're going to have Giga Shanghai Model Y coming online. Shanghai Model 3 is ramping. Giga Berlin Model Y will come online. And then Giga Texas, Cybertruck potentially, Semi potentially will also come online. 2022, we're going to have Giga Berlin Model Y now ramping. Giga Berlin Model 3 potentially coming online. Giga Texas, Cybertruck, and Semi ramping. And then potentially a new Giga Factory in India. If you missed it just recently, I think a day or two ago, Elon tweeted that by next year, 2021, maybe 2022, Tesla should be in India. That doesn't necessarily mean there will be a Giga Factory there. It could mean something else, but we'll keep an ear to the ground on that one. Now, 2023, our main catalyst will be the $25,000 Tesla, whether it's Model 2, Model A, only time will tell. And then their 4680 or the Roadrunner cells should be at scale at some level by 2023, which will obviously play a big role in driving revenues. 2024, we'll have that cheaper, more affordable Tesla ramping at that stage, hopefully. And 2025, I personally, this is where I think full self-driving could be very interesting with the regulatory environment being greenlit, meaning even when Tesla gets to feature complete with full self-driving, which, you know, they could do in the next year or two, for them to actually be allowed to have this on the roads and working is an entirely different story. And Elon has said many times that the main challenge will be the regulatory environment. So, I mean, 2025 seems like a reasonable guess. At least that's where I'm landing personally. And then, you know, 2026, we would have Full self-driving more at scale and then software as a service also at scale. More on that in a moment. But as you can see for 2027 down to 2030, I have it going from 40% a year to 30 and then 20 and 20. Reason being, if you take a look at this chart, which is Amazon's revenue history, you can see this is for the last 10 years for Amazon. So their year over year growth has been anywhere from 19% to 30%. Now, of course, I would argue that Amazon is more mature than Tesla is at this stage, but I've always felt that these two companies were very comparable, so I really like to pull those numbers. And of course, Tesla at some point will mature. I mean, they've been around since 2003. They went public in 2010. So, you know, they're really not like a brand new company, but in terms of auto manufacturing relative to that industry, they're a baby still because these other companies have been around for 100 years. And now I don't want you guys to think that I don't think Tesla will have some level of revolutionary catalyst in 2027 and beyond, because that's not the case. I just think it's too hard to project things from their energy business, too hard to project a Tesla HVAC or a Tesla boat or, you know, anything different that we haven't yet heard about, you know, more public transit type stuff. So I like to stick to what we know when it comes to projections like this, at least for now. So as you can see with those estimates in there, that will take us down with these annual revenue numbers. And by 2030, they could be doing $950 billion in revenue if they hit these year over year figures. Now, taking a look at this new chart. So what you're looking at is the cumulative Teslas on the road. So in April of this year, it was assumed that Tesla has over a million cars on the road. And then for each year listed on the left, we have the 50% annual delivery growth estimates on the right. So by 2025, with that 50% growth rate annually, they'd be delivering roughly 3.8 million cars in 2025, just 2025 alone. Now, keep in mind, these are like super general, ultra conservative numbers, but I think it's really good to give you a frame of reference for what you can expect. So what I did was I took the cumulative 2025 figure of 10.3 million Teslas on the road, took about a 30% uptake of those cars that would actually spend some money on software as a service. And then I put that number at about $2,000 spent per car to yield about $6 billion in software as a service sales. 
Now, I also added a 25% full self-driving uptake, which has been to date uh, the case. So that would be about 2.5 million cars of the 10.3 million Teslas on the road that would buy full self-driving. And that would yield almost $40 billion in revenue. So as you can see, if you add those two together, you get roughly, you know, $44, $45 billion in revenue by 2025, just from software as a service from ultra conservative numbers, which is already almost double their entire business revenue as of 2019. So I think this space is just massive and that does not include any licensing or anything along those lines. So once again, ultra conservative numbers, but I really do think this will be a big part of their revenue and an even bigger part of their profits in the future. Now, shifting over to look at some price to sales figures. If you're not familiar, this is just one metric that you can start to use to value or see how expensive a company's sales figures are to buy as a shareholder. So Amazon's price to sales at the end of 2019 was 3.28. If you're not familiar, all you do is you take the market cap and divide it by the revenue or the sales. So Amazon's revenue at the end of 2019 was $920 billion. Divide that by their $280 billion that they did in sales in 2019 to get your 3.28 price to sales ratio. Doing the same for Apple, their price to sales is 4.96 at the end of 2019 and Tesla's for comparison's sake at the end of 2019 was 3.08. So in line with Amazon and Apple. Now, if you remember the yellow is an estimate. So what you're looking at here, the Tesla price to sales at the end of 2030, I have a three just to keep in line with Amazon, Apple, you know, this is reasonable. So what you do is you back in some other numbers. So we'll take the total revenue of 2030 that we have projected to be roughly $953 billion in sales. So all you do, this would be the variable, the market cap that you solve for. So if you make that X, you would just take the sales times the price to sales ratio to get a market cap of $2,861 billion or in simpler terms, $2.8 trillion in market cap by 2030. From there, we will calculate a target share price by 2030 of $3,070 per share. How do you get that? It's very simple. All you do is you take the market cap, which would be 2.8 trillion, and divide that by the number of shares outstanding, which if you take a look at this little chart, Right now, it's 931.81 million shares outstanding. So doing the math, 2.8 trillion divided by 931 million shares outstanding would give you a share price of $3,070. Now, I really want to make it clear, if you're new to the financial space and the stock market, doing this type of thought process with one metric involved, in this case, the price to sales ratio to determine a share price, is not something that you want to bet the house on. So it's great in terms of seeing what is realistic. And of course, we try to do this somewhat conservatively because if you remember, I didn't include anything for energy storage. I didn't include anything for software as a service in the actual revenue numbers. And so full self-driving would be included in the software as a service, which could be massive, you know? And so just keep in mind, one metric alone never tells the whole story. They're just tools that on their own can be useful. So basically what you can take away from this is by 2030, it's not unreasonable to think that the share price could be $3,000. Now, how much confidence do you want to put in that? That's completely up to you. And in future videos, we can break that up a little bit more. But for this episode, it was really just meant to be a high level look at the revenue figures over the next decade based on what Elon has said, based on what sort of catalyst Tesla has over the next 10 years. So I really do hope that you learned something and I hope that I didn't confuse you. If you have questions, drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them. I answer questions even quicker over on Patreon. Thank you to all of you who do choose to support the channel financially over there. It really helps balance out the ad revenue ups and downs. So please take a second to like the video. Consider subscribing so you don't miss my future Tesla 2030 series episodes. As I said, they will be coming out over the course of the next few weeks with different topics that we'll take a look at. So... 
with all of that, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.